Now I discovered that there are seven seven things when you are dealing with foundational issues, foundational problems or afflictions. When you are dealing with problems or afflictions that are foundational, that means that they will either manifest as patterns or as cycles. There are seven things that I've discovered that sponsor or facilitate their consistent operation. Number one, sexual immorality. Let's talk about it first. Sexual immorality or bondage. Sexual sin is a very, very, very intricate and extensively a very disastrous sin. Because the Bible says that every sin is done outside the body. But sexual immorality is done to the body. So sexual immorality is you sinned against two different people. You sinned against God and then you sinned against your body. Sexual immorality, don't only be scared of it because of disease, STD, sexually transmitted diseases. There are also sexually transmitted demons. Covenants are entered into when two people have intercourse. A part of you people have shared one another. A part of that person is into you and you are into that person. So if that person comes from a lineage that is suffering from a transgenerational affliction or a cycle or a foundational problem, you have covenanted yourself to become a partaker of it whether you believe it or not and it is it is worse when it doesn't manifest instantly i didn't i didn't perform the act masturbation is also sexual immorality um next week i'm going to deal with that more what you call it pornography is also immorality anything that is unnatural around that place god will forgive the individual of the sin but the consequences will come on the individual because the bible says in romans 6 23 that the wages of sin is what death sin is an action it will obey the law of cause and effect yes god will forgive you by not holding the sin against you but your action is going to require that a consequence you have sown so it must be reaped that one god will not stop it not because he want, he doesn't want to stop it for you to suffer but it's because you indulged in it lawfully you created an action that must spark a reaction sexual immorality is one number two spiritual marriages seven things that sponsor well foster or facilitate foundational afflictions or problems number two spiritual marriage believe it though there are spiritual marriages what is the token of a marriage the union of sex so you may not see that you are married to a spirit invisibly as it were but when you go to sleep and in your dream somebody comes and fulfill the right of a husband or a wife something is wrong in fact demonic technology has advanced now as i study that you don't even need to see anybody in the dream you just wake up and know something has happened or you, 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 you see yourself in your dream. You are putting on a wedding gown. And you are standing with somebody and you can't see the person's face. Now, I'm not saying that all those dreams are wrong. But, you know, to a large extent, to a large extent, I can give you one sign to know that a dream is demonic. Every time you are interfacing with an individual in that dream and the things happening there are not too good, no, in fact, they are not good. There is nothing like too good or not. They are not good. And you cannot see the face of the individual. Or you are seeing the face of somebody who is very close to you that you know will have nothing to do with that activity. You are, that's a demonic dream. That's a familiar spirit operating. Number three, satanic altars and shrines. I, I heard the story of a, a man. <laughs> I heard the story of a man who came from a very diabolical background and you know there's poverty people they, they, they alter and the spirits in that background and there were witches too there they will not allow anybody to rise 
So the guy traveled very far and he became, you know, God blessed him somehow. He bought a car and he was doing well. When he wanted to go to the village to visit them in the village, he drove his car to a village. The village before his village, he stopped there. Put all that he had in the car. He came down, wore tattered clothes and trekked to his village. And when he met, he met, was he his father or his uncle? When he met, he said, ah, where your car? He said, no, I don't have any car. He said, you're not praying for me. Things are too hard. Things are not working. They say, uh-uh, go bring your car. Come now. He was still there struggling. Then they took a bowl and poured water inside. Made some incantations and they showed him where he parked the car. A spirit can touch your car and it doesn't matter the mechanic you take it to. The mechanic will get tired of you. What do you do against that? You need to pray what I call desolation prayers. In 1 Kings chapter 13, the Bible said, God sent a prophet when the king of Israel built an altar against foreign gods. God sent a king, a prophet, and he went to prophesy against the altar, desolation, that the altar will be scattered. Number four, bury charms and satanic deposits. Bury a charm in a house. And they can't complete that house. They can't complete the building. Any man that begins to engage in charms, deposits, you are already inviting, you know, foundational afflictions to be sustained. Number five. Number five. Placenta and hair bondage. <laughs> placenta and hair bondage. Women will agree with me. I don't know if they do it now. Maybe our women now, they are so modernized. But in those days, our mothers, in the generation of our mothers, they are very careful about what you do to the placenta of their child. Right, mommy? They have to know who is going to bury it. They bury it, isn't it? Do you know why? Humanly speaking, you may just say, well, the placenta was used to connect the mother to the child for the purpose of nutrition. And now that the child is born, there's no need. But can I tell you something? That placenta you see is a spiritual gate between one life to another life because nutrition and life passes through it from the mother to the child. So whatever is done with your placenta, whether you believe it or not, whether you went to school in Oxford or not, can affect you. You, I, oh, you, the realm of the spirit has no respect for your degree or where you did. If I did it in Manchester, do it in Manchester. Do it in Oxford. Go to Harvard and do two degrees. The realm of the spirit remains on top. I'm telling you. Even in science, your hair, they can use it to do a DNA test and determine paternal parentage or maternal parentage. If they can do that with science, how much more spiritually? They can use the hair of a person to control the destiny. Placenta is a gate. And whatever happens to that gate affects the destiny. Your hair is like your glory. Number six, satanic decrees. Causes. Satanic decrees. I had the story of a father when his daughter was 14 years. She did something and he was angry. And he said, if I am your father, your womb will never carry a child. And this lady got married many years later, miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. Why? Somebody placed a decree, a curse. A family, somebody rose up, an evil person, spoke to the first son of a man. He said, I know you are supposed to go abroad, but you will never go abroad. Years later, the son wanted to travel. On his way to the airport, he had an accident and broke his leg. They took him to the hospital. Six months, finally became well. They decided he tried again. When he got to the airport, they entered the plane. While they were preparing to take off, he started convulsing, vomiting. They had to take him out of the plane for medical attention, and the plane took off. As soon as they take him out, they took him out, and the plane took off, he became fine. The third time he struggled and landed there. Two weeks later, they deported him back. Satanic decrees. Anybody that has spoken, and you know the thing with decrees, maybe they spoke it against your mother. They spoke it against your grandmother. And now you are suffering for no just cause. 
You were not the one that offended them, but now you are suffering from it. But today, every satanic decree against your life and destiny, we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. I say we cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Sit down, I'm rounding up now. Number seven, blood covenants and incisions. Blood covenants. That, that, all these people that go to malams, malams, be careful. In fact, if you have gone to a malam and you are here, you need deliverance. When we start praying, please pray. It's not an insult. It's a statement of fact. You need what? Deliverance. Even if the Baba didn't consult, you stepped your leg there. No, I'd rather serve God. God's way may be gradual. I will wait. Some of us, respectfully speaking, we come from lineages where all kinds of covenants were made. Even you, you remember when you were five, they mixed blood with something and gave you to swallow. And you didn't know why. Now you are 25 years. You are a born again Christian. You think that nothing happened there. Simply because you have confessed Jesus Christ. Yes, spiritually you are free from that. But that, that operation was entrenched on the law. And God is so just a God. That anyone that understands the laws of the realm of the spirit. And can manipulate it to suit him. And God will not hold him responsible. Because he is on the advantage. Because what he is doing is legally done. It's a law.